and welcome, I'm your code monkey. Here are 5 mistakes to avoid as a game dev. Okay, I have some help with me for this video. I have Chris Zukowski. We've made a few videos quite a while ago and people enjoy them quite a lot. So welcome back Chris, and just in case people don't know, just a quick who you are and what do you do, how do you help game devs? Hey, I'm Chris Zukowski. I write for this site that I made called howtomarketagame.com. I talk about how to market games on Steam, indie games. I write a blog every week. And you can find that at howtomarketagame.com. And then I also have a free book that you can pick up if you go to howtomarketagame.com slash free. So I'm here to help you market your indie game. All right, awesome. So let's see these five common mistakes that in devs make and how you can avoid making them yourself. So first mistake, don't pick a good marketable idea. Don't worry about game hooks. Don't worry about any of that at all. So really just make the first thing that comes to your head. So if it's a puzzle platformer, then just do that. Don't worry about the fact there's already thousands of those around. Don't test your idea. Don't think about hooks. Don't worry about any of that. Just start your idea and start building it. Yeah, yeah, I would not do that. Here's here's how to fix that failure there. Here, here, here's what we, what you can do. Here's some ideas. So um, Steam and genre are one of the most important things. Um, they really determine the type of game that will do well and will not. Um, I've studied thousands of games and... Um, I've seen there's definite genres that do well. Some examples are, you know, horror games, uh, crafty buildy games. These are like open world survival craft, deck builders, roguelike deck builders, management games, simulation games. All these games where you kind of manage and build things are very popular with Steam. So make sure that you kind of see what other of those management building style games are. Play a bunch and see what those are. And I know they might not be your first favorite, but kind of look and play them. You'll come up with some ideas. So see some of those games that have done done well and see how you can adapt it to something you really do like. Because people have to see in an instant whether they like the game or not and whether they want to research more about it. If you have just a regular idea that's been done a thousand times, you're going to have a hard time. Okay, so next mistake, don't bother with scope management. So whatever your idea, whatever the size it is, just make it. Any new ideas you come up with, any new level story, just keep adding more and more things, more levels, more weapons, more skills, just keep adding more and more stuff. So if your game takes 10 to 20 years to make, then so be it. This is your masterpiece, so it doesn't really matter. Also, don't bother with making sure that everything fits together, that all the mechanics work together. Build them isolated, build them completely separate, doesn't really matter. Really all that matters is the number of features. A game with 100 features is always going to be better than a game with just 5 features. So don't stop to think if the game idea makes sense with your game design pillars. Don't even think about game design pillars. Anything that pops into your head, just build it. And in 5 to 10 years, you will have made a game. And since it has so many features, it's bound to be very good. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Here, here, this is definitely a path for failure. Okay, so here's what's going to happen. Um, it is very hard to make up the sales after you've been in development for a long time. It is easier to cut scope and sell what you can rather than try and sell more copies because your timeline has run long. It is very hard to fill that gap. So I recommend that you really limit scope, especially for your first game. You're gonna make so many mistakes with your first game that it's best to make those mistakes on a game that maybe is not your dream game. It's a small scope, tiny, tiny game, just to kind of get it out there. Save your dream game for your fifth, sixth, seventh game. You're gonna be in this for a long time. So don't think that the first shot is all you've got. You got a lot of games in your left, kid. I know you can make a lot more games. So, so keep at it. Small scope, beginning, really your game marketing idea, right? The first one. That's what's really that first kind of concept that you come up with really determines how well your game's gonna sell. Making more and more content on top of that really isn't gonna interest people. It's the initial genre the hook, that's what determines a lot of how well your game sells, or at least how marketable the game idea is. More features, just don't add that much more to it. Okay, so next mistake, don't worry about visuals. Games are games. Players really only care about gameplay, so the gameplay is really all that matters. So don't worry about buying any visuals, any proper assets. Just use basic cubes, basic spheres. Don't worry about any post-processing, any animations, any polish, anything of that. Really just focus on the gameplay, and as long as the gameplay is great, then people are bound to see the genius of your game design skills. People will love the game, they won't buy it, you'll make tons of money and it will be massively successful. So don't worry about visuals, don't worry about presentation, sound, none of that. Just focus on mechanics, that's all that matters. Aye, aye, aye. Okay, okay, so this, this just won't work. Okay, uh, all right, your, your visuals are one of the most important marketing aspects of your game, bar none. Um, now, 
if your game is super duper beautiful, like so beautiful, you can just tweet an image and it can go viral. It's, it's, it's one of the best ways to show quality is with visuals. However, when you have maybe programmer art or art that isn't professionally done, full-time job, it, it transmits some, some concerns to the, to the potential shopper. Uh, they, 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 they extrapolate from the poor visuals and assume, well, this game's probably buggy, the game design isn't interesting, it's a first time developer, it's probably not that good. They have a reason to doubt you. And with so many games releasing on Steam, they don't have time or the will to try out your game idea. They're not, they're gonna turn away users. So what I recommend is, yes, if you're, if you're a small struggling indie who's just starting out, I think asset store art is okay. Um, maybe not use the most popular packs, maybe what they call kit bashing, which is you take a, you take a kit and you kind of tweak the, the colors, the texture. So it doesn't look like everybody else. Um, but having those core visuals really help. And hire some freelancers to help you out with the art. They're not as expensive as you would assume. Um, good art can be done affordably um, if done smartly. Um, so really, your visuals, people will judge you based off of them. It, it really matters. So, so please don't, don't just put up program art. Please don't just use one asset pack and, and use that for all your art. You need a variety of art styles. So, so, so take this seriously. It's, it's, it's a big thing. Okay, next mistake. Don't tell anyone about your game ideas. Remember that ideas are priceless. Really, in every game dev studio, the most valuable person is really the game ideas guy. So don't tell anyone your ideas. Don't try to validate them. Don't post them on Reddit, Twitter. Don't do any of that. Don't get any feedback on anything at all. If you do that, then someone will just steal your game idea. They will make the game for you and they will make the millions of dollars that should have been yours. So work in secret on your game idea. Work in secret by yourself for many months, many years. Do that to make sure that nobody steals your idea and then suddenly launch your game and you will find tons of success because surely whatever ideas you come up with, those are bound to be the best ideas possible. All right. I can sympathize with this one. It's very scary to put yourself out there, but I can guarantee you nobody's going to steal your game idea, uh, especially if you're a first time dev. Why would they steal your idea? You're a first time dev. <laughs> Not to belittle, just I'm just saying uh, maybe they would copy somebody who's very famous. But here's the other thing is art is very subjective and there's there's no way you could make the same game as somebody else you could even take two prompts give them to two different developers and they're going to make two completely different games and so you don't have to worry about somebody stealing your idea because an idea is just that it's just a tiny idea i know you're going to think that somebody's going to steal it but they won't i promise and even if they did steal it it's not going to turn out the same way as yours really although i said previously that the that the idea and the hook are very important for your marketability. After that, people have to play your game. And if it's not good, if the if the if it's buggy or the game's not very deep, that's a bigger problem. And so it is also the implementation. The, the, the concept and the hook can bring people in, but it's your game and whether it's fun and playable, that's the most important thing. So how many zombie games are there out there, by the way? Tons. And they still sell well because people love zombie games. <laughs> And so theoretically, that's the same idea, but it's the implementation, the different rule sets, the different things that you're doing in these different zombie games. And the best part is, even if you find somebody else who's making a nearly identical idea as yours, it's not that bad. Uh, there were two games, Peglin and Roundguard. There were two games that were almost identical. They are roguelike, bouncing ball dropping games set in a medieval setting, both released within the same year. And guess what? They actually bundled together once they discovered they were making the same game. And both games sold very well by bundling together. Because here's the deal. If somebody likes one game, they're going to like one that's very similar. It's more of something that they like. So if you do find out somebody that's making something very similar to yours, go reach out. Become friends. Bundle together. And then somebody's going to buy both of your games instead of one or the other. So reach out. Find some friends. Be nice to that person that supposedly stole your idea. I don't think they actually did. There's not that many games ideas. <laughs> so good luck out there. Next mistake is don't bother with playtesting. So you are more than enough of a, just a single tester. You are more than capable of playing as completely different people. You are special, so you are definitely capable of playing through completely different playstyles the way that millions of different people do. 
You are also capable of completely ignoring all the knowledge you have from actually building the game. You can ignore that and actually simulate what it's like to play the game for the very first time as someone who has never seen it. So definitely don't join any Steam festivals, don't do any of that, don't do any playtesting, don't get friends, family, don't do any demos, don't do any of that, just playtest yourself and that is going to be more than enough. Oh boy, oh boy, okay, okay, well, let's, let's, let's dial this one back. So this one's personal, I used to be a UX designer, we would always research our user interface, I do it for boring corporate software, but the same applies for games, so we used to take that game, show it to naive users, as we call them, naive, because they don't know about your product, in your case, your game, and we'd get feedback and we'd watch them do specific tasks. Now, tasks are easy for video games because it's like, hey, go slay that dragon, and then you go watch to see how they slay that dragon. Now, here's a couple of mistakes I always see people do. One is they go to a in-person conference and they call that playtesting. Do not do playtesting in person for the conferences, and there's a couple of reasons for that. Those conferences are so loud, like on the show floor where you have a booth, they're so loud and it's so chaotic that you're not getting a good test. And a lot of people that are going to these conferences, these like show floor, expo floors, they're just there like playing around. They, don't, they have no interest in your type of game. They might just be like happening to walk by to the bathroom and you pull them aside and say, hey, hey, you want to play my game? And they're like, oh, I don't know. Maybe they don't even like your type of game. Um, and I've seen developers make drastic design decisions based off of bad data from these in-person show floors. Please don't do them uh, with the interest of getting player feedback because your game, if you have a really deep game, um, the, the feedback you get on a show floor is very ephemeral. It's people like, just like, like I said, going to the bathroom. They're, they're just kind of like trying to sample a bunch of games. They're not locked in, concentrating on your game. The alternative, what I'd highly recommend you do for playtest is find people who kind of like your genre. Go to Reddit, find the subreddit that kind of specializes in your genre, reach out to people, uh, say, hey, I'm, I'm looking for a survey, get people to take that survey, and then see if you can do a one on one Discord meet with them where you one-on-one -on -one share and then have them play through a build of your game and just watch them quietly. That feedback is very important. You're gonna see where the, the UX design flaws are in your design. You're gonna find where there's bugs that, you know, misunderstandings, text that's not as clear. So really it's best to do this kind of like one-on-one, -on -one, not on show floors. You're just gonna get sloppy data. And um, I think that's the best way to get that feedback. This one's personal, please folks play test. One other benefit of play testing is you get your marketing copy written for you. Marketing copy is just the text that you put like in tweets or on your store page. When you do a play test, sometimes you'll hear people say like, oh man, this has the best graphics of any zombie shooter I've ever seen. <laughs> then you've got marketing copy. Now you can go in and say on your store page, the best graphics of any zombie shooter ever. See, when you hear from the fans and what their reactions are to your game, you can actually take that feedback, work it into your marketing. It really helps. So yep, those are five mistakes you should avoid if you want your games to find success. And nowadays, marketing is an extremely important part of how to find success. So if you want to learn more about marketing, then Chris has an excellent amount of content where you can learn tons of stuff. So Chris, go ahead. How can people learn more about this super important skill? Yeah, we've been talking a lot about failures here, and I just want you all to know, let's, 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 let's make it real here. It's 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 hard. This is a hard business and nothing makes sense. There's like no instruction book. OK, there's no uh, you know, people are going to fail not because they're bad people or they're dumb. It's just because this is the weirdest industry out there. Like, oh, who, who makes sense of this stuff? So what I did was I made this course. It's like totally like the instruction book I wish I had when I first started making games. I kind of see it as your way to avoid failures that are very common. And again, they're not failures. They're just mistakes. They're just lessons you haven't learned yet. So my course, uh, I do this every Black Friday. I put it on deep, deep discount. And uh, I'm partnering here with Code Monkey. We're, we're, we're teaming up. Uh, we're sharing whatever whatever you buy. We're going to split it. So um, I really appreciate you all for, for watching. And I hope, hope we can work together and uh, try this course out. Make these mistakes virtually by watching my course. And then you don't have to make them in real life and really hurt your chances. Because I don't want you to hurt your chances. I want your game's dreams true your game development dreams i think it's uh, i think it's something we all want to do so i'm here to help you all out so uh thank you so much code monkey for having me on i i i think this is going to be a fun moment with uh, you and your fans
Right, yeah, thanks for being here, Chris. Thanks for sharing all your knowledge. And yep, check the link in the description to pick up the courses with the Black Friday discount. It is lasting for a few more days, so definitely get it quickly. All right, so yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.